Welcome back to our channel. We hope you'll find valuable content here. If you enjoy our channel, please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Let's dive in. Episode 1, Introduction to Entrepreneurship. Welcome to the first episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll embark on an exciting journey into the world of entrepreneurship. Our goal is to make entrepreneurship accessible to everyone, breaking down complex ideas into everyday language so that you can confidently explore the characteristics of successful entrepreneurs and grasp the fundamentals of starting a business. Whether you're a seasoned professional with years of experience or someone just starting to explore the world of entrepreneurship, this episode serves as your entry point to a world of opportunities. What is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a thrilling and transformative path. It's like being the captain of your own ship, charting unexplored waters and turning your visions into reality. Instead of working for someone else, entrepreneurs are the architects of their destinies, and they are driven by an unwavering belief in their ideas. Traits of Successful Entrepreneurs Successful entrepreneurs share a set of common traits that set them apart. Passion, they are deeply passionate about their ideas and are willing to put in the hard work to turn them into reality. Risk-taking, entrepreneurs are not afraid to take calculated risks. They understand that without risk, there's often no reward. Innovative, they think outside the box and are constantly looking for new and better ways to do things. Resilience, entrepreneurship can be tough and setbacks are common. But successful entrepreneurs bounce back, learning from their failures and moving forward. Adaptability, the business world is ever-changing. Entrepreneurs are quick to adapt to new technologies, trends, and market conditions. Starting a business Now, let's talk about the basics of starting a business. It's a bit like building a house, you need a solid foundation. Here are the initial steps. Idea generation, start with a great idea. This could be a product, service, or a unique solution to a problem. The best ideas often come from identifying a need in the market. Market research, before diving in, research your target market. Who are your potential customers? What do they need? Is there demand for your product or service? Business plan, think of a business plan as your roadmap. It outlines your goals, strategies, and how you'll achieve them. It's also a crucial document if you need to secure funding. Legal considerations, register your business, understand your tax obligations, and protect your intellectual property if needed. Funding, you may need some capital to get started. This can come from your savings, loans, or investors. Execution, once everything is in place, start executing your plan. Build your product or service, market it, and get your first customers. Remember, entrepreneurship is not just about making money. It's about pursuing your passion, solving problems, and creating value for others. In our journey through this program, we'll delve deeper into each of these steps and provide practical advice and examples to help you become a successful entrepreneur. So, get ready to turn your dreams into reality and join us for the next episode as we explore identifying business opportunities. Episode 2, Identifying Business Opportunities Welcome to the second episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we're going to explore a critical aspect of entrepreneurship, identifying and evaluating business opportunities. This skill is the foundation upon which successful businesses are built. By the end of this episode, you'll be equipped with the knowledge and tools to spot potential business ideas and assess their viability. Why Identifying Business Opportunities Matters Before we dive into the how, let's talk about why identifying business opportunities is so important. It's like being a detective, searching for hidden treasures in the business world. Here's why it matters. Innovation, new business opportunities often involve innovative solutions to existing problems or entirely new products and services. 
Market demand, identifying opportunities means finding unmet needs or gaps in the market that your business can fill. Competitive advantage, being the first to seize an opportunity can give your business a competitive edge. Methods for identifying opportunities. Now, let's explore some methods for identifying business opportunities. Problem solving, look for problems in your own life or the lives of others. Solutions to these problems can be the foundation for a business. Market research, analyze trends, consumer behavior, and emerging markets. What industries are growing? What needs are unaddressed? Observation, pay attention to your surroundings. Sometimes, opportunities are right in front of you. For example, a local coffee shop owner might notice a growing interest in organic, fair trade coffee and decide to capitalize on that trend. Networking, connect with people in various industries. Attend networking events and listen to what others are discussing. They might share valuable insights that could spark an idea. Evaluating business opportunities. Identifying an opportunity is just the beginning. You also need to assess its feasibility. Here's how. Market potential. Is there a sizable market for your idea? Who are your potential customers, and what is their buying behavior? Competition. Who else is in the same space, and how does your idea compare? Is there room for your business to thrive? Financial viability. Can you realistically fund and sustain this venture? What are the costs involved? And what kind of revenue can you generate? Risk analysis. What are the potential risks, and how can you mitigate them? Understanding the challenges is crucial for planning. Unique selling proposition. USP. What makes your idea stand out? What value does it offer that others don't? By the end of this episode, you'll have a clear understanding of how to spot promising business opportunities and evaluate their potential. Armed with this knowledge, you'll be well prepared to take the next steps in your entrepreneurial journey. Join us in the next episode as we delve into market research and validation, where we'll learn how to validate your business ideas and ensure they meet the needs of your target market. Episode 3, Market Research and Validation Welcome to the third episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll delve into the critical realm of market research and validation. Imagine this as the compass that guides your entrepreneurial journey. By understanding your market thoroughly, you can increase the likelihood of success and reduce the risks associated with launching a business. Why market research and validation are essential. Before we explore how to conduct market research, let's understand why it's crucial. Customer understanding, market research helps you understand your potential customers, what they need, what problems they face, and how your business can provide solutions. Risk mitigation, it reduces the risks associated with entering a market blindly. By gathering data, you can make informed decisions. Competitive advantage, market research can reveal gaps in the market that your business can fill, giving you a competitive edge. Types of market research Market research comes in two primary forms, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative research, this involves collecting numerical data, such as surveys and questionnaires. It helps quantify market trends, preferences, and behaviors. Qualitative research, this focuses on gathering non-numerical data, like interviews and focus groups. It provides insights into customer attitudes, motivations, and feelings. Steps to Conduct Market Research Here are the steps to effectively conduct market research. Define your objectives. Clearly state what you want to achieve through your research. Are you looking to understand your target market, assess demand, or evaluate competitors? Gather data, collect data through surveys, interviews, online research, or other methods. Ensure your data is relevant to your objectives. Analyze data, examine your data to identify trends, patterns, and insights. This will help you make informed decisions. 
Validate your idea, use the research findings to validate whether your business idea aligns with the needs and preferences of your target market. Adjust your strategy, if necessary, refine your business idea, marketing approach, or product slash service based on the research findings. Validation, testing your business idea. Once you've conducted market research, it's time for validation. This involves testing your business concept to see if it resonates with potential customers. Here's how. Minimum Viable Product, MVP, create a simplified version of your product or service to test in the market. This allows you to gather real-world feedback. Prototyping, if you're offering a physical product, create prototypes for testing. This helps identify design flaws and improvements. Pilot testing, in some cases, you might run a small-scale pilot test of your business idea to assess its viability and gather initial customer feedback. Feedback loops, continuously gather feedback from your early customers and use it to refine your offering. By the end of this episode, you'll be equipped with the knowledge and tools to conduct effective market research and validate your business idea. These skills are vital for ensuring that your venture aligns with market demands and has the potential for success. Join us in the next episode as we explore the Business Model Canvas, a practical tool for structuring your business concept and strategy. Episode 4, Business Model Canvas Welcome to the fourth episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll introduce you to a powerful tool that every aspiring entrepreneur should have in their toolkit, the Business Model Canvas. Think of it as the blueprint for your business, helping you map out key elements and ensure your venture is structured for success. What is the Business Model Canvas? Imagine you're building a house. Before construction begins, you need a detailed plan that shows where each room will be, how they connect, and what purpose they serve. The business model canvas is your plan for your business, it outlines how your company creates, delivers, and captures value. It provides a clear, concise, and holistic view of your business concept. Key Components of the Business Model Canvas The business model canvas consists of nine key building blocks. Customer Segments Who are your target customers? Define different groups based on their needs and preferences. Value Proposition What unique value does your product or service offer to your customers? Why should they choose you over competitors? Channels How will you reach your customers and deliver your value proposition? This could include online sales, retail locations, or distribution partners. Customer Relationships How will you interact with your customers? Will it be through personal assistance, automated systems, or community building? Revenue streams, how will your business make money? Define your pricing strategy and revenue sources. Key resources, what assets and resources does your business need to operate successfully? This could include physical assets, intellectual property, or partnerships. Key activities. What are the essential activities your business must perform to deliver its value proposition and generate revenue? Key partnerships, identify any external partners, suppliers, or alliances that are critical to your business's success. Cost structure, what are the main costs associated with running your business? Consider both fixed and variable expenses. Creating your business model canvas. Here's how to create your business model canvas. Start with customer segments. Define your target customers and their needs. Value proposition. Clearly articulate the unique value your business provides to these customers. Channels. Determine how you will reach your customers and deliver your value. Customer relationships. Describe how you will engage with and retain your customers. Revenue streams. Identify your sources of income. Key resources and activities, list the resources and activities necessary to deliver your value proposition. Key partnerships, note any essential collaborations or partnerships. Cost structure, document your anticipated costs. 
By completing your business model canvas, you'll have a comprehensive overview of your business idea, which is crucial for attracting investors, partners, and stakeholders. It also helps you spot potential gaps or areas that need further refinement. In our next episode, we'll discuss the importance of assembling a strong team for your startup and building a startup team. Your team plays a critical role in bringing your business model to life. Episode 5, Building a Startup Team Welcome to the fifth episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the essential topic of building a startup team. Your team is the heart and soul of your business, and assembling the right group of people with the right skills and shared vision is crucial for success. Why Your Team Matters Imagine your startup as a ship sailing through uncharted waters. Your team members are your crew, and together, you'll navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Here's why your team is so important. Diverse skills, a well-rounded team brings diverse skills to the table. This diversity can be a competitive advantage, as each member contributes unique strengths. Shared vision, when your team shares a common vision and values, it fosters cohesion and alignment, making it easier to work toward a common goal. Support and collaboration, entrepreneurship can be challenging. Your team provides support, motivation, and different perspectives to help you overcome obstacles. Assembling your startup dream team. Here are some strategies for assembling a strong startup team. Identify skill gaps. Start by assessing your own skills and weaknesses. What skills are crucial for your business that you may lack? These gaps can guide your search for team members. Define roles. Clearly define the roles and responsibilities for each team member. This prevents overlap and ensures everyone knows their contribution. Seek complementary skills. Look for team members whose skills complement yours. If you're a visionary, consider adding someone with strong operational or financial expertise. Cultural fit. Consider the culture you want for your startup. Will it be laid back and creative or more formal and structured? Choose team members whose values align with this culture. Networking. Leverage your network and attend industry events to meet potential team members. Personal connections can often lead to successful collaborations. Collaboration. Encourage open communication and collaboration within your team. Foster an environment where everyone feels heard and valued. Team Dynamics. Managing a startup team involves more than just recruitment. It also involves understanding team dynamics. Leadership, define clear leadership roles and decision-making processes. A strong leader can guide the team effectively. Conflict resolution, conflicts may arise. Address them openly and constructively to prevent them from becoming detrimental to your team's success. Motivation, Keep your team motivated and engaged by setting achievable goals and recognizing their contributions. Feedback. Provide regular feedback and encourage team members to do the same. Feedback is essential for growth. Continuous learning. Entrepreneurship is a learning journey. Encourage ongoing learning and development among your team members. Your startup team is not just about filling positions. It's about building a group of dedicated individuals who believe in your vision and are committed to helping your business succeed. In our next episode, we'll explore creating a minimum viable product, MVP, a critical step in bringing your business idea to life and testing it in the real world. Stay tuned! Episode 6, Creating a Minimum Viable Product, MVP Welcome to the sixth episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll dive into a pivotal step in your entrepreneurial journey, creating a minimum viable product, MVP. Think of this as your business's first draft, a prototype that allows you to test your ideas, gather feedback, and refine your offering. What is a minimum viable product? Imagine you're a chef, creating a new dish. Before you serve it to your restaurant guests, you taste it yourself to make sure it's just right. 
The minimum viable product is like that first taste, it's the simplest version of your product or service that still delivers value to your customers. Why start with a minimum viable product? Starting with a minimum viable product offers several advantages. Risk reduction, it minimizes the risk of investing heavily in a product or service that may not meet market demand. Feedback gathering, a minimum viable product allows you to collect valuable feedback from real users, helping you improve your offering. Faster time to market, you can get your product or service to market faster, beating competitors and gaining early traction. Cost savings, developing a full-scale product or service can be expensive. Starting with a minimum viable product is more cost-effective. Creating your minimum viable product. Here's how to go about creating your minimum viable product. Identify core features. Determine the most essential features or components of your product or service. These should address the primary pain points or needs of your target audience. Simplify. Simplify your minimum viable product to its core. Remove any non-essential features or complexities. Build or prototype. Depending on your offering, you can build a simple version of your product, create a digital prototype, or even use manual processes to provide the service. Test. Put your minimum viable product in the hands of your target audience. Collect feedback on their experiences and use it to make improvements. Iterate. Based on feedback, make necessary adjustments and enhancements to your minimum viable product. Keep testing and iterating until you have a product that resonates with your customers. Example, the minimum viable product journey of a ride-sharing app. Consider the example of a ride-sharing app. The minimum viable product might start with a simple app that allows users to request rides from drivers. It could lack features like price comparison, advanced booking, or driver ratings. However, it provides the core value, getting people from point A to point B conveniently. As user feedback pours in, you can gradually add features, improve the user interface, and expand your service area. This iterative approach allows you to grow your offering in line with customer demand. By the end of this episode, you'll understand the importance of creating a minimum viable product and have the knowledge to develop one for your own startup. Your minimum viable product will be the first step in testing your business idea and making it a reality. Join us in the next episode as we explore funding and financing options to help you understand how to secure the resources needed to grow your startup. Episode 7, Funding and Financing Options Welcome to the seventh episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the essential topic of funding and financing options for your startup. Finding the right financial support is crucial for turning your business idea into a reality. Why funding matters. Think of funding as the fuel that propels your startup forward. It allows you to develop your product, expand your team, and reach your target market. Here's why funding matters. Resource allocation, funding provides the resources needed to turn your business concept into a functional and market-ready offering. Growth and scalability, with adequate funding, you can scale your operations, expand into new markets, and grow your customer base. Risk mitigation, adequate funding can help you weather unexpected challenges and uncertainties that may arise during your startup journey. Types of funding and financing options Let's explore some common funding and financing options available to entrepreneurs. Bootstrapping, this involves using your savings or revenue generated by the business to fund its growth. Bootstrapping gives you full control but may limit your initial capacity. Friends and family, you can seek financial support from friends or family members who believe in your business idea. However, it's essential to formalize agreements and maintain professionalism. Angel investors, angel investors are individuals who provide capital to startups in exchange for equity or convertible debt. They often offer valuable mentorship and industry connections. Venture capital, venture capital firms invest in startups with high growth potential. They provide larger sums of money in exchange for equity. 
Venture capitalists often take an active role in guiding the company. Crowdfunding Platforms like Kickstarter and Indiegogo allow you to raise funds from a large number of people who believe in your project. Contributors may receive rewards or equity in return. Bank loans Traditional bank loans can provide financing, but they typically require collateral and come with interest rates. They are suitable for businesses with a solid credit history. Grants and competitions Many organizations offer grants or host startup competitions. These can provide non-dilutive funding and valuable exposure. Choosing the right funding option Selecting the right funding option depends on your business's stage, industry, and growth trajectory. Consider the following factors. Stage of development Early stage startups may opt for bootstrapping, friends and family, or angel investors, while more mature companies may seek venture capital. Equity versus debt Decide whether you're willing to exchange equity for funding or prefer debt financing. Each has its advantages and implications for ownership and control. Industry Some industries are more attractive to specific types of investors. Tech startups, for example, often seek venture capital due to their potential for rapid growth. Business goals Consider your long-term objectives. Are you aiming for steady growth? Or do you have ambitions of becoming a unicorn startup? Pitching your business Regardless of the funding source you pursue, effective pitching is essential. You must clearly articulate your business concept, market potential, revenue model, and growth strategy. Practice your pitch until it's polished and compelling. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of the various funding and financing options available to startups. This knowledge will help you make informed decisions and secure the resources needed to take your business to the next level. Join us in the next episode as we explore pitching and presenting to investors, where we'll dive deeper into the art of pitching your business idea effectively to potential investors. Episode 8, Pitching and Presenting to Investors Welcome to the 8th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll delve into the art of pitching and presenting to investors. Mastering this skill is vital for securing the funding you need to turn your startup vision into reality. Why Pitching Matters Imagine you have a fantastic story to tell, but you need an audience to listen. That's where pitching comes in. It's your opportunity to communicate your vision, passion, and potential to investors. Here's why pitching is essential. Funding access, successful pitches attract investors who are willing to provide the financial support your startup needs to grow. Credibility, a well-executed pitch enhances your credibility and demonstrates that you have a clear and compelling business concept. Networking, even if you don't secure funding immediately, pitching can help you build valuable connections in the investor community. Crafting an effective pitch. Creating a compelling pitch involves several key elements. Start with a hook. Begin with a captivating opening that grabs the audience's attention. This could be a surprising statistic, a relatable story, or a thought-provoking question. Tell your story, share your entrepreneurial journey, and the problem you're solving. Investors often connect with founders who have a compelling backstory. Present the problem. Clearly define the problem your product or service addresses. Explain its significance and the pain points it causes for potential customers. Introduce your solution, describe your solution concisely. Highlight its unique features and how it solves the problem better than existing alternatives. Market opportunity, illustrate the market opportunity by discussing the size of your target market, its growth potential, and the competitive landscape. Revenue model, explain how your business will make money. Detail your pricing strategy, customer acquisition plan, and revenue projections. Traction and milestones, showcase any traction or milestones your startup has achieved. This could include user growth, partnerships, or revenue milestones. Team overview, introduce your team and their qualifications. Investors want to know that you have the expertise to execute your vision. Ask for investment, 
Clearly state what you're seeking from investors, whether it's a specific amount of funding, equity, or other terms. Closing impact, end your pitch with a memorable closing statement that reinforces your vision and leaves a lasting impression. Practice, feedback, and adaptation. Practice is essential for perfecting your pitch. Rehearse in front of friends, mentors, or advisors and seek constructive feedback. Use this feedback to refine and adapt your pitch. Remember that your pitch should be tailored to the specific audience you're addressing, whether it's angel investors, venture capitalists, or crowdfunding backers. Visual aids and slides. If you're using presentation slides, keep them simple and visually engaging. Use visuals to illustrate key points and avoid overcrowding slides with text. Slides should complement your spoken words, not duplicate them. By the end of this episode, you'll have the knowledge and tools to develop a compelling pitch that resonates with investors. This skill will be invaluable as you seek funding to grow your startup. Join us in the next episode as we explore legal and regulatory considerations, addressing the important legal aspects of starting and operating a business, including intellectual property protection. Episode 9, Legal and Regulatory Considerations Welcome to the ninth episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll delve into the critical topic of legal and regulatory considerations for startups. Understanding the legal landscape is crucial for protecting your business and ensuring compliance with the law. Why Legal and Regulatory Compliance Matters Think of legal and regulatory compliance as the foundation upon which your business stands. It's like following the rules of the road when driving. Here's why it matters. Protection, legal compliance protects your business from legal disputes, fines, and penalties that could threaten its existence. Credibility, compliance demonstrates professionalism and can enhance your reputation among customers, partners, and investors. Intellectual property protection, safeguarding your intellectual property, IP, ensures that your innovative ideas and creations remain exclusively yours. Key Legal and Regulatory Considerations Let's explore some of the essential legal and regulatory aspects for startups. Business Structure Choose the right legal structure for your business, such as a sole proprietorship, LLC, corporation, or partnership. Each structure has different tax, liability, and operational implications. Business Registration Register your business with the appropriate government authorities, obtain necessary permits, licenses, and tax IDs, and comply with local, state, and federal regulations. Contracts and Agreements Draft and maintain contracts and agreements with clients, suppliers, employees, and partners. These documents define the terms of your business relationships and protect your interests. Intellectual property, IP identify and protect your IP, which may include trademarks, copyrights, patents, and trade secrets. IP protection prevents others from using or reproducing your unique assets. Data privacy, comply with data privacy laws and regulations, especially if your business collects and processes customer data. Protecting sensitive information is vital. Employment law, understand labor laws, including hiring practices, wages, benefits, and workplace safety. Complying with employment regulations is essential for employee well-being and legal protection. Taxation, be aware of tax obligations for your business, including income tax, sales tax, and payroll tax. Accurate record-keeping is critical. Contractual disputes, have a plan for resolving contractual disputes or conflicts that may arise in the course of your business operations. Intellectual property protection. Intellectual property, IP, is often a startup's most valuable asset. Protecting your IP can safeguard your competitive advantage. Here are some ways to protect IP. Trademarks, register trademarks for your brand, logo, and slogans to prevent others from using similar marks. Copyrights, copyright protects original works of authorship, such as written content, software, and artistic creations. 
Patents, patents protect inventions, processes, and innovative technologies. Consider patenting your unique products or methods. Trade secrets, safeguard trade secrets, such as proprietary formulas or processes, through confidentiality agreements and security measures. Consult legal professionals. Seek legal counsel to ensure that your business complies with all relevant laws and regulations. Legal professionals can help you navigate complex legal issues, draft contracts, and protect your intellectual property. By the end of this episode, you'll have a strong understanding of the legal and regulatory considerations that every startup must address. This knowledge will help you establish a solid legal foundation for your business, reducing the risk of legal challenges down the road. Join us in the next episode as we explore business plan development, where we'll guide you through the process of creating a comprehensive business plan that outlines your company's strategy. Episode 10, Business Plan Development Welcome to the 10th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll delve into the crucial process of developing a comprehensive business plan. Think of your business plan as the roadmap that guides your startup from idea to successful operation. Why a business plan matters. Imagine you're embarking on a cross-country road trip. Before hitting the road, you'd want a detailed plan that includes your route, stops, and estimated travel time. A business plan serves a similar purpose, it provides a structured guide for your startup journey. Here's why it matters. Clarity of Vision, a well-crafted business plan helps clarify your business concept, goals, and strategies. Communication Tool, it serves as a communication tool for sharing your vision with potential investors, partners, and team members. Strategic Guidance, your plan outlines the steps to achieve your objectives and serves as a reference point for decision-making. Key Components of a Business Plan a comprehensive business plan typically includes the following sections. Executive Summary, a concise overview of your business, including your mission, vision, and the problem you're solving. Business Description, detailed information about your business concept, industry, and target market. Market Analysis, research on your market, including customer demographics, competition, and trends. Product or service offering, a description of your offering, its unique features, and its value proposition. Marketing and sales strategy, how you plan to reach your target market and convert leads into customers. Management team, profiles of your team members and their qualifications. Operational plan, details about your business operations, including suppliers, technology, and processes. Financial projections, financial statements such as income projections, cash flow forecasts, and balance sheets. Funding requirements, if you're seeking investment, specify the amount and how you'll use the funds. Appendices, supporting documents such as market research data, resumes of key team members, and legal agreements. Creating your business plan. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to creating your business plan. Research. Gather relevant data, including market research, industry analysis, and financial projections. Outline. Create an outline that includes the sections mentioned earlier. This will serve as the framework for your plan. Write and revise. Begin writing each section of your plan. Be concise, clear, and factual. Revise and refine your content for clarity and coherence. Financial projections. Prepare detailed financial projections based on your research and assumptions. This includes revenue, expenses, and cash flow forecasts. Executive Summary Write the executive summary last, as it should provide a concise overview of the entire plan. Review and seek feedback. Share your plan with advisors, mentors, or peers for feedback. Incorporate their suggestions to improve your plan. Format and presentation, ensure your plan is professionally formatted, with clear headings, graphs, and tables to enhance readability. Using your business plan. Your business plan is not just a one-time document, it's a dynamic tool. Use it to attract investors. 
Present your plan to potential investors or lenders to secure funding. Guide operations, continuously refer to your plan as a roadmap for executing your business strategy. Monitor progress, compare your actual results to the projections in your plan to track your startup's performance. Adapt and pivot, if circumstances change, be prepared to adjust your plan and strategies accordingly. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of how to create a comprehensive business plan that outlines your company's strategy and goals. This plan will be an invaluable resource as you navigate the challenges and opportunities of entrepreneurship. Join us in the next episode as we explore marketing strategies for startups, where we'll delve into lean marketing techniques to reach customers on a limited budget. Episode 11, Marketing Strategies for Startups Welcome to the 11th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the art of marketing for startups. Effective marketing is like a spotlight that shines on your business, attracting customers and driving growth. We'll focus on lean marketing strategies tailored to startups with limited budgets. Why Lean Marketing Matters Picture yourself in a crowded marketplace where dozens of vendors are vying for attention. Lean marketing helps your startup stand out without burning through your resources. Here's why it matters. Cost efficiency, lean marketing techniques maximize your reach without requiring a large advertising budget. Targeted approach, it enables you to focus your efforts on the most promising customer segments. Flexibility, lean marketing strategies can adapt quickly to changing market conditions and customer preferences. Key lean marketing strategies for startups. Let's explore some lean marketing strategies tailored to startups. Content marketing, create valuable, informative content that addresses your target audience's pain points. This can include blog posts, videos, webinars, or podcasts. Share this content through your website and social media. Social media marketing, leverage social platforms to engage with your audience. Choose the platforms where your target customers are most active. Consistency and authenticity are key. Email marketing, build an email list of interested prospects and customers. Send personalized, relevant content and offers to nurture these relationships. Search Engine Optimization, SEO Optimize your website and content to rank higher in search engine results. This boosts organic traffic and visibility. Partnerships and Collaborations, Partner with complementary businesses to expand your reach. Joint Promotions and Collaborations can be mutually beneficial. Referral Programs, Encourage satisfied customers to refer others to your business. Offer incentives for successful referrals. Community engagement, participate in industry forums, attend local events, and engage with your community both online and offline. Measuring and iterating. One of the advantages of lean marketing is its focus on data and continuous improvement. Use analytics tools to track the performance of your marketing efforts. Key metrics to monitor include website traffic, conversion rates, customer acquisition cost, and customer lifetime value. Based on the data, adjust your strategies to optimize results. Building a brand story. Effective marketing goes beyond tactics, it's about telling a compelling brand story. Your story should resonate with your target audience, highlighting your unique value proposition and the problem you're solving. A strong brand story builds trust and emotional connections with customers. Marketing Budget Management While lean marketing focuses on cost efficiency, it's important to allocate your budget wisely. Determine the most effective channels and tactics for reaching your audience. Test different strategies and scale up those that provide the best return on investment. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of lean marketing strategies that can help your startup reach customers effectively without breaking the bank. Marketing is a dynamic field, so be prepared to adapt and refine your strategies as your business grows. 
Join us in the next episode as we explore scaling and growth strategies, where we'll discuss strategies for managing growth and expanding your startup into new markets. Episode 12, Scaling and Growth Strategies Welcome to the 12th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the exciting phase of scaling and growing your startup. Scaling is like setting sail on a bigger ship, it requires careful navigation, preparation, and a clear strategy. Why Scaling Matters Scaling is about taking your successful startup to the next level. It's the transition from a small, agile vessel to a larger, more robust ship capable of navigating new markets and serving more customers. Here's why scaling matters. Increased impact, scaling allows you to reach more customers and have a greater impact in your industry or market. Revenue growth, expanding your operations often leads to increased revenue and profitability. Competitive advantage, a well-executed scaling strategy can give you a competitive advantage by capturing market share. Key scaling and growth strategies. Let's delve into some key strategies for scaling your startup effectively. Market expansion, identify new geographic regions or market segments to reach. Research these markets thoroughly to understand their unique needs and preferences. Product diversification, consider expanding your product or service offerings to cater to a broader audience. This may involve creating complementary products or variations of your existing offering. Franchising, if applicable, explore franchising as a method of expansion. Franchising allows others to replicate your business model in different locations. Strategic partnerships, form partnerships with other businesses that complement your offering. These collaborations can help you access new customers and resources. Acquisitions, consider acquiring other businesses in your industry to expand your reach or gain access to new technology or talent. Investment and financing, secure additional funding, such as venture capital or loans, to fuel your growth. Ensure you have a clear plan for how this capital will be used. Operational efficiency, streamline your operations to handle increased demand efficiently. This may involve optimizing processes, investing in technology, or expanding your team. Customer retention, focus on retaining existing customers as you scale. Happy, loyal customers are your best advocates. Planning and risk management. Scaling is an exciting journey, but it comes with risks. Effective planning and risk management are essential. Business plan update. Revise your business plan to align with your growth strategy. Set clear milestones and metrics to track progress. Financial planning. Ensure your financial projections and budgets are realistic. Consider potential cash flow challenges as you grow. Talent acquisition. Attract and retain top talent to support your growing operations. A skilled team is critical for successful scaling. Customer support. Maintain high-quality customer support to meet the needs of a growing customer base. Contingency planning. Prepare for unforeseen challenges or setbacks. Having contingency plans in place can mitigate potential risks. Maintaining your company culture. As you scale, it's important to preserve the core values and culture that made your startup successful. Communicate your company's mission and values clearly to new employees, and ensure everyone understands and aligns with your vision. By the end of this episode, you'll have insights into strategies for scaling and managing the growth of your startup. Successfully scaling a business requires careful planning, resource allocation, and the ability to adapt to new challenges and opportunities. Join us in the next episode as we explore managing risk and uncertainty, where we'll discuss how to navigate uncertainties and proactively manage risks inherent in entrepreneurship. Episode 13, Managing Risk and Uncertainty Welcome to the 13th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the crucial topic of managing risk and uncertainty in the world of entrepreneurship. 
Just as a ship must navigate stormy seas, entrepreneurs must steer their startups through unpredictable waters. Why managing risk and uncertainty matters. Entrepreneurship inherently involves risk and uncertainty. Understanding and effectively managing these challenges is essential for the success and longevity of your startup. Here's why it matters. Minimizing losses, effective risk management can help you minimize potential losses and protect your business from catastrophic events. Adaptability, a strong risk management strategy enables your startup to adapt to changing circumstances and seize opportunities. Investor confidence, investors and partners are more likely to support your startup when they see that you have a proactive approach to risk mitigation. Identifying and assessing risks. Before you can manage risks, you must first identify and assess them. Risks in entrepreneurship can be categorized into several areas. Market risks, these include changes in customer demand, competitive pressures, and market volatility. Operational risks, these stem from factors within your business, such as supply chain disruptions, technology failures, or employee issues. Financial risks, these involve financial challenges like cash flow problems, unexpected expenses, or economic downturns. Legal and regulatory risks, these pertain to compliance with laws and regulations, potential lawsuits, or intellectual property disputes. Reputational risks, these involve damage to your startup's reputation due to negative publicity, customer complaints, or ethical issues. Managing risks effectively. Here are strategies for managing risks effectively. Risk assessment, regularly assess and update your risk profile. Consider the likelihood and potential impact of each identified risk. Diversification, diversify your product or service offerings, customer base, and revenue streams to reduce reliance on a single source. Insurance, purchase appropriate insurance coverage to mitigate certain types of risks, such as liability or property damage. Financial planning, maintain a healthy financial buffer to withstand unexpected financial challenges. Contingency planning, develop contingency plans for various risk scenarios. These plans outline steps to take if a risk event occurs. Legal counsel, consult with legal professionals to ensure compliance with laws and regulations and to address potential legal risks. Crisis communication, have a plan for addressing crises that may affect your startup's reputation. Transparent communication is crucial. Monitoring and adaptation, continuously monitor your risk landscape and adjust your strategies as needed. Embracing uncertainty as opportunity. Entrepreneurs often thrive in uncertain environments. Uncertainty can be an opportunity for innovation, adaptation, and growth. Maintain a mindset that sees challenges as a chance to learn and improve. Risk and reward. In entrepreneurship, risk and reward are closely intertwined. Taking calculated risks can lead to significant rewards, but it's important to balance ambition with a realistic understanding of the potential downsides. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of how to navigate uncertainties and proactively manage risks inherent in entrepreneurship. This knowledge will help you make informed decisions and steer your startup towards success. Join us in the next episode as we explore innovation and creativity, where we'll delve into techniques to foster innovation and creative problem solving in your startup. Episode 14, Innovation and Creativity Welcome to the 14th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll dive into the fascinating world of innovation and creativity. These are the driving forces behind entrepreneurial success and can set your startup apart in a competitive landscape. Why Innovation and Creativity Matter Imagine you have a toolbox filled with innovative solutions and creative ideas. These tools empower you to solve complex problems, adapt to changing market conditions, and stay ahead of the curve. Here's why innovation and creativity matter. Competitive advantage, innovative products, services, and approaches give you a competitive edge in the marketplace. 
Problem solving, creativity enables you to find unique solutions to challenges that may arise during your entrepreneurial journey. Adaptability, innovation allows your startup to adapt to evolving customer needs and technological advancements. Fostering innovation and creativity. Here are strategies for fostering innovation and creativity within your startup. Cultivate a creative culture. Create an organizational culture that encourages and rewards creativity. Make employees feel safe to share ideas without fear of criticism. Diverse teams. Build teams with diverse backgrounds and perspectives. Different viewpoints often lead to more innovative solutions. Idea generation, host brainstorming sessions and idea sharing events. Encourage employees to think outside the box and explore unconventional solutions. Experimentation, embrace a culture of experimentation. Encourage employees to test new ideas and approaches, even if they might fail. Continuous learning, invest in the professional development of your team members. Learning new skills and gaining fresh insights can spark creativity. Customer-centric approach, listen to your customers and understand their needs deeply. Innovations that solve real customer problems are often the most successful. Collaboration, foster collaboration both within your team and with external partners. Collaborative efforts can lead to innovative breakthroughs. Innovation models. Consider exploring innovation models such as design thinking or lean startup methodology to structure your innovation process. These frameworks provide a systematic approach to problem solving and idea development. Creativity techniques. Here are some creativity techniques you can apply in your startup. Mind mapping, use mind maps to visually organize and explore ideas. They help you see connections and possibilities more clearly. Brainstorming, conduct structured brainstorming sessions to generate a multitude of ideas quickly. Scamper, Scamper is an acronym representing different creative thinking techniques, such as substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate, and reverse. Role play, Encourage team members to role-play different scenarios to gain new perspectives on problems. Storytelling Use storytelling as a way to communicate ideas and concepts more effectively, making them relatable and memorable. Leadership and Innovation As a leader in your startup, your actions and attitudes play a significant role in fostering innovation and creativity. Lead by example, embrace change, and encourage a culture where innovation is valued and supported. Measuring innovation. Innovation can be challenging to quantify, but it's essential to track and measure your efforts. Consider metrics such as the number of new ideas generated, successful innovations implemented, and their impact on your business. By the end of this episode, you'll have gained insights into techniques for fostering innovation and creative problem-solving within your startup. Remember that innovation is an ongoing process that can drive your business to new heights. Join us in the next episode as we explore networking and building industry relationships, where we'll help you develop networking skills to connect with mentors, partners, and customers in the business world. Episode 15, Networking and Building Industry Relationships Welcome to the 15th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the art of networking and building industry relationships. Networking is like building a bridge, it connects you with valuable mentors, partners, and customers who can help your startup thrive. Why Networking Matters Imagine you're on an island, and you need resources and knowledge that are scattered across different islands. Networking builds bridges to these islands, enabling you to access expertise, support, and opportunities. Here's why networking matters. Access to expertise, networking allows you to tap into the knowledge and experience of others, helping you make informed decisions. Resource sharing through networking, you can find partners, investors, and collaborators who can provide resources and support. Growth opportunities, networking expands your reach, opening doors to new customers, markets, and business opportunities. 
Effective Networking Strategies Here are strategies to help you become an effective networker. Build authentic relationships. Focus on building genuine connections rather than seeing people as mere business opportunities. Show a sincere interest in others. Attend industry events, attend conferences, workshops, and industry-specific events to meet like-minded professionals and potential partners. Leverage online platforms, utilize professional networking platforms like LinkedIn to connect with industry peers, mentors, and potential customers. Join associations and organizations, become a member of industry associations and organizations related to your field. These groups often provide networking opportunities. Seek mentorship, find mentors who can offer guidance and support. Mentors can provide valuable insights and open doors. Give before you receive, offer help and support to others without expecting an immediate return. Generosity often leads to meaningful relationships. Effective networking conversations. Engaging in productive networking conversations is crucial. Here are some tips. Listen actively. Pay close attention to what others are saying and show genuine interest in their experiences and ideas. Elevator pitch. Craft a concise and compelling elevator pitch that introduces yourself and your startup effectively. Ask thoughtful questions. Ask open-ended questions that encourage meaningful discussions. For example, what challenges are you currently facing in your industry? Follow up. After networking events or meetings, follow up with a personalized message to express your appreciation and continue the conversation. Share your value. Clearly communicate what you bring to the table and how you can be of value to others. Maintaining and nurturing relationships. Building relationships is just the beginning, maintaining and nurturing them is equally important. Stay in touch with your network regularly, offer assistance when possible, and be proactive in seeking opportunities for collaboration. Networking Ethics Maintain ethical standards in your networking efforts. Be honest and transparent, respect others' time and boundaries, and avoid aggressive or manipulative tactics. Measuring Networking Success While networking can be challenging to measure quantitatively, you can assess its success by the quality of relationships formed and the opportunities that arise from those connections. Keep track of meaningful interactions and collaborations. By the end of this episode, you'll have gained insights into effective networking strategies and the importance of building industry relationships for the success of your startup. Networking is a valuable skill that can open doors to growth and innovation. Join us in the next episode as we explore the Lean Startup methodology, diving into the principles of Lean Startup and emphasizing iteration and customer feedback in your entrepreneurial journey. Episode 16, Lean Startup Methodology Welcome to the 16th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the principles of the Lean Startup Methodology, a powerful approach for startups that emphasizes efficiency, iteration, and customer feedback. Why Lean Startup Matters Imagine you're building a ship, and instead of spending years designing it in isolation, you construct a small prototype and test it in real waters. The Lean Startup Methodology follows a similar principle, build, test, and learn quickly to create a more efficient and successful business. Here's why it matters. Minimizing waste, Lean Startup reduces the risk of investing time and resources in a product or service that may not meet customer needs. Customer-centric, it keeps the customer at the center of product development, ensuring that you're building something people actually want. Agility, Lean Startup allows you to adapt to changing market conditions and customer preferences swiftly. Key Principles of Lean Startup Let's explore the key principles of the Lean Startup methodology. Build Measure Learn, the core of Lean Startup is the Build Measure Learn feedback loop. Start by building a minimum viable product, MVP, to test your assumptions. Measure its performance and gather feedback from real customers. Learn from this data and iterate on your product. Validated learning, 
focus on learning what works and what doesn't through real-world experimentation. Rely on data and customer feedback rather than assumptions. MVP Minimum Viable Product The MVP is the smallest version of your product that allows you to test its core functionality with real customers. It's not about building a complete product, but about testing your ideas. Pivot and persevere. Based on what you learn from testing, be ready to pivot, make significant changes to your product or strategy, or persevere, continue refining your current path. Build Measure Learn Feedback Loop. Continuously repeat the Build Measure Learn loop to refine your product and improve its fit with the market. Applying Lean Startup Principles Here's how to apply Lean Startup Principles effectively. Hypothesize Start with a hypothesis about your product's value and market fit. Build Create an MVP to test your hypothesis. Keep it simple and focused on core features. Measure, use data and metrics to assess how your MVP performs. Are customers using it? Are they engaged? Learn, gather insights from customer feedback and data. Is your hypothesis validated? What needs to change? Pivot or persevere, based on what you've learned, decide whether to pivot your strategy or persevere with improvements. Repeat, continue the loop gradually building a more refined and valuable product. Lean Startup Tools Several tools and techniques can aid in implementing the Lean Startup methodology. A-B Testing Compare two versions of a product or feature to determine which performs better with users. Customer Development Engage with potential customers to gather insights and validate assumptions. Business Model Canvas, use this visual framework to outline key components of your business model, helping you identify areas for improvement. Lean Analytics, analyze specific metrics relevant to your business to assess performance and make data-driven decisions. Challenges and Adaptations While Lean Startup can be highly effective, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Some businesses and industries may face challenges in applying these principles. Adapt the methodology to suit your specific circumstances and industry. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of the Lean Startup methodology and how it can help you build a successful startup by focusing on efficiency, customer feedback, and rapid iteration. Join us in the next episode as we explore business pivot and adaptation, where we'll discuss how to recognize when to pivot your business model based on market feedback, a critical skill for entrepreneurial success. Episode 17, Business Pivot and Adaptation Welcome to the 17th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the vital topic of business pivot and adaptation. Just as a ship adjusts its course to navigate changing seas, entrepreneurs must adapt their business models based on market feedback. Why Business Pivot and Adaptation Matters Imagine you set sail on a journey, but the winds suddenly change direction. To reach your destination, you must adjust your sails and sometimes even change course. Similarly, in entrepreneurship, adapting to changing market conditions and customer needs can be the key to long-term success. Here's why it matters. Market evolution, markets evolve, and customer preferences change. Adapting ensures your business remains relevant. Problem solution fit, adapting helps you fine-tune your product or service to better address customer pain points. Competitive landscape, shifts in the competitive landscape may require adjustments to maintain a competitive edge. Recognizing when to pivot. Pivoting is not a sign of failure, it's a strategic adjustment. Here are indicators that it may be time to consider a pivot. Market feedback, if customer feedback consistently indicates dissatisfaction or unmet needs, it's a red flag. Changing market conditions, shifts in the market, such as the emergence of new competitors or technologies, may require adaptation. Stagnant growth, if your business isn't experiencing the growth you anticipated, it's time to reassess your approach. Financial challenges, persistent financial challenges can be a sign that your business model needs adjustment. 
Learning from failure, sometimes a failed product or strategy can provide valuable lessons that inform a pivot. Types of pivots. There are different types of business pivots. Customer segment pivot, shift your target audience to better match the needs of a different customer segment. Problem solution pivot, reframe or adjust your product or service to better address a specific problem or need. Technology pivot, change the technology or tools you use to deliver your product or service. Channel pivot, change the way you reach and distribute your product to customers. Revenue model pivot, adjust your pricing or monetization strategy. Acquisition pivot, consider mergers, acquisitions, or partnerships to adapt to market changes. Executing a pivot. When you decide to pivot, it's crucial to do so strategically. Collect data, gather data and insights to inform your pivot decision. Customer feedback and market research are valuable. Set clear goals. Define specific goals for the pivot, such as increasing customer satisfaction or expanding your customer base. Communicate changes, be transparent with your team, customers, and stakeholders about the changes and the reasons behind them. Test and iterate, like any business strategy, a pivot may require testing and iterations to get it right. Measure success, use relevant metrics to track the success of your pivot. Are you achieving your defined goals? Resilience and adaptation. Entrepreneurs often encounter setbacks and challenges. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from these difficulties, learn from them, and adapt. A willingness to adapt is a hallmark of successful entrepreneurs. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of the importance of recognizing when to pivot your business model based on market feedback. The ability to adapt and pivot can be a key factor in the long-term success of your startup. Join us in the next episode as we explore managing resources and operations, where we'll delve into efficient resource allocation and operations management in startups. Episode 18, Managing Resources and Operations Welcome to the 18th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the critical aspects of managing resources and operations in your startup. Just as a ship's crew manages supplies and navigates the seas efficiently, entrepreneurs must allocate resources wisely and operate their businesses efficiently. Why Managing Resources and Operations Matters Imagine you're preparing for a long voyage. To ensure a smooth journey, you must efficiently manage your resources plan for contingencies, and navigate effectively. Similarly, in entrepreneurship, managing resources and operations is crucial for sustainability and success. Here's why it matters. Resource optimization, efficient resource management ensures that you make the most of your available capital, time, and talent. Cost control, effective operations management helps control costs and maintain financial stability. Customer satisfaction, efficient operations, can lead to better customer experiences and satisfaction. Resource allocation. Effective resource allocation involves making strategic decisions about where to invest your time, money, and personnel. Here are key areas to consider. Financial resources, allocate your capital wisely, budget carefully, and monitor your financial health. Human resources, hire and retain talented individuals who align with your startup's goals. Create a strong team culture. Time management, prioritize tasks, set clear objectives, and manage your time efficiently to maximize productivity. Technology and tools, invest in the right technology and tools that enhance productivity and support your business goals. Suppliers and partners, Build relationships with reliable suppliers and partners who can contribute to your success. Operations Management Effective operations management involves optimizing your business processes to deliver products or services efficiently. Key principles include Process efficiency, streamline workflows and processes to eliminate unnecessary steps and reduce bottlenecks. Quality control, implement quality control measures to ensure that your products or services meet high standards. 
Inventory management, maintain optimal inventory levels to avoid overstocking or running out of essential supplies. Supply chain management, optimize your supply chain to reduce costs and improve delivery times. Customer service, provide excellent customer service to enhance the overall customer experience. Contingency planning. Just as a ship carries lifeboats and emergency supplies, startups should have contingency plans in place. Consider potential challenges that could disrupt your operations, such as financial downturns, supply chain interruptions, or technology failures. Develop strategies to mitigate these risks and maintain business continuity. Sustainability and Growth Resource and operations management is not only about maintaining the status quo, but also about supporting growth and sustainability. Efficient operations free up resources that can be reinvested in your business for expansion and innovation. Technology and Automation Leverage technology and automation tools to streamline operations and reduce manual tasks. This can improve efficiency and accuracy while freeing up your team to focus on more strategic activities. Continuous Improvement Adopt a mindset of continuous improvement. Encourage your team to identify areas where operations can be enhanced and seek feedback from customers and stakeholders. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of the importance of managing resources and operations in your startup. Effective resource allocation and operations management are critical to achieving long-term sustainability and success. Join us in the next episode as we explore social entrepreneurship and impact business, where we'll delve into how to create businesses that address social or environmental challenges, making a positive impact on the world while achieving business success. Episode 19, Social Entrepreneurship and Impact Business Welcome to the 19th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the world of social entrepreneurship and impact business, where startups focus on making a positive impact on society or the environment while achieving business success. Think of it as setting sail, not just for profit but for a better world. Why Social Entrepreneurship and Impact Business Matter Imagine embarking on a voyage with a mission to clean up the oceans or improve access to clean water for communities in need. Social entrepreneurship and impact businesses carry a similar mission, they aim to address pressing social or environmental challenges. Here's why it matters. Social impact, these businesses create positive social or environmental change, contributing to a better world. Purpose-driven, social entrepreneurs are driven by a deeper purpose beyond profits, which can inspire teams and attract customers. Sustainability, impact businesses often adopt sustainable practices that benefit the planet and future generations. Defining social entrepreneurship and impact business. Social entrepreneurship and impact business are broader than traditional profit-driven startups. They include organizations and initiatives that prioritize social or environmental missions, often with innovative business models. Here's how to define them. Social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurs start businesses that tackle social problems, such as poverty, education, healthcare, or environmental sustainability. They measure success not only by financial returns, but also by the positive impact they create. Impact business, impact businesses can encompass a wide range of enterprises that intentionally create positive social or environmental outcomes while pursuing financial sustainability. This includes B corporations, B core, social enterprises, and sustainable startups. Key strategies for social entrepreneurs. If you're interested in starting a social enterprise or impact business, here are some key strategies to consider. Define your mission. Clearly define the social or environmental issue you aim to address. Your mission will guide your business decisions. Business model innovation, innovate your business model to align with your mission. Explore revenue models that support your impact goals. Partnerships, collaborate with organizations, nonprofits, or government agencies that share your mission. Partnerships can amplify your impact. Measurement and reporting, 
Develop metrics to measure your social or environmental impact. Transparency is essential for building trust. Storytelling, share your mission and impact with your audience. Storytelling can help connect with customers and supporters. Examples of impact businesses. Impact businesses come in various forms. Here are some examples. Fair trade companies, these businesses ensure fair wages and working conditions for producers in developing countries while selling their products in developed markets. Clean energy startups, companies focused on renewable energy solutions to combat climate change. Microfinance institutions, organizations providing small loans to individuals and entrepreneurs in underserved communities. Healthcare innovations, startups developing affordable healthcare solutions for underserved populations. Measuring impact. Measuring social or environmental impact can be challenging but is crucial for accountability and improvement. Consider using metrics like the Social Return on Investment, SROI, or the Triple Bottom Line, TBL, approach, which considers social, environmental, and financial results. Balancing Profit and Purpose Successfully balancing profit and purpose is a core challenge for social entrepreneurs. It requires creative business strategies and a commitment to the long-term mission. By the end of this episode, you'll have gained insights into the world of social entrepreneurship and impact business. These ventures are not only financially rewarding but also contribute to positive social and environmental change. Join us in the next episode as we explore exit strategies and succession planning, where we'll examine options for exiting a startup, including acquisition, IPO, or passing it on to the next generation, a critical consideration for entrepreneurs. Episode 20, Exit Strategies and Succession Planning Welcome to the 20th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the crucial topic of exit strategies and succession planning. Just as a ship's captain plans for the journey's end, entrepreneurs must plan for the future of their startups, whether it's an exit or a handover. Why Exit Strategies and Succession Planning Matter Imagine you've successfully navigated your ship to its destination. Now, you must decide what comes next. Will you continue sailing, transfer the ship to someone else, or dock for good? Similarly, in entrepreneurship, exit strategies and succession planning are essential for defining the next chapter of your startup journey. Here's why it matters. Goal Achievement Exit strategies help you achieve your ultimate financial and personal goals for your startup. Business Continuity Succession planning ensures the seamless transition of your business, preserving its legacy and value. Risk Mitigation Planning for exit scenarios helps mitigate risks and uncertainties that may arise in the future. Common Exit Strategies There are several common exit strategies for entrepreneurs. Acquisition, selling your startup to a larger company is one of the most common exit strategies. This can provide a significant financial return and opportunities for growth. IPO, initial public offering taking your startup public through an IPO allows you to sell shares to the public, providing access to capital and liquidity for investors. Merger, merging with another company can create synergies and opportunities for growth, while providing an exit for you and your investors. Management buyout, MBO in an MBO, the existing management team purchases the company from its owners, often with the help of external financing. Passing it on, some entrepreneurs choose to pass their business on to family members or trusted employees, ensuring continuity and preserving the company's culture. Succession planning. Succession planning is essential for ensuring the smooth transition of your business. Key steps in succession planning include Identify successors, determine who will take over the leadership and ownership of the business. This may involve family members, employees, or external candidates. Training and development, prepare the successors for their new roles through training, mentorship, and skill development. Legal and financial planning, work with legal and financial advisors to navigate the legal and financial aspects of succession. Communication, 
Communicate the succession plan to relevant stakeholders, including employees, investors, and customers. Transition period. Plan a transition period during which the current owners and the successors work together to ensure a smooth handover. Timing your exit. Timing is crucial when considering your exit. Factors to consider include market conditions, business performance, and personal goals. The decision to exit should align with your desired financial outcome and the overall health of your startup. Planning for taxes. Exit strategies can have significant tax implications. Consult with tax advisors to optimize your exit from a tax perspective and minimize potential tax liabilities. Balancing business and personal goals. Your exit strategy should align with your personal goals and aspirations. Consider what you want to achieve personally and financially, and plan accordingly. Legacy and Impact Consider the legacy you want to leave behind through your business. Some entrepreneurs choose exit strategies that allow them to continue contributing to their industry or community even after leaving their business. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of exit strategies and succession planning. These strategies are not only about the end of your entrepreneurial journey, but also about ensuring the continuity of your business and the achievement of your goals. Join us in the next episode as we explore e-commerce and online startups, where we'll discuss strategies for launching and growing e-commerce businesses in the digital age, a topic of great relevance in today's business landscape. Episode 21, E-Commerce and Online Startups Welcome to the 21st episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll delve into the exciting world of e-commerce and online startups. Just as a ship sets sail on the vast digital ocean, entrepreneurs can explore endless possibilities in the digital marketplace. Why e-commerce and online startups matter Imagine having a virtual storefront accessible to customers around the world 24-7. E-commerce and online startups enable you to do just that. They provide access to a global customer base, lower operational costs, and the flexibility to adapt to changing consumer preferences. Here's why it matters. Global reach, e-commerce allows you to reach customers worldwide, expanding your market beyond geographical boundaries. Cost efficiency, online startups often have lower overhead costs compared to traditional brick-and-mortar businesses. Adaptability, the digital realm offers the flexibility to pivot quickly, update products, and tailor marketing efforts based on data and trends. Strategies for e-commerce success If you're considering starting or growing an e-commerce business, here are key strategies to keep in mind. Niche selection, choose a niche or product category that aligns with your expertise and has demand in the market. User-friendly website, invest in a well-designed, user-friendly website that provides an excellent customer experience. Product selection, carefully curate your product offerings to meet the needs and preferences of your target audience. Digital marketing, Develop a robust digital marketing strategy that includes SEO, social media marketing, email marketing, and paid advertising to drive traffic and sales. Customer service, provide excellent customer service, including responsive communication and hassle-free returns. Data analytics, use data analytics to gain insights into customer behavior and preferences, allowing you to make data-driven decisions. Mobile optimization, ensure your website is mobile-friendly, as a significant portion of e-commerce traffic comes from mobile devices. Dropshipping and fulfillment. Consider different fulfillment models for your e-commerce business. Dropshipping, with dropshipping, you don't hold inventory. Instead, products are shipped directly from suppliers to customers. It minimizes upfront costs and inventory management but may have lower profit margins. In-house fulfillment, managing your own inventory allows for greater control over product quality and shipping times but may require more significant upfront investment. Customer trust and security. Establish trust with your online customers by Secure transactions, ensure that your website uses secure payment processing methods to protect customer data. 
Clear policies clearly communicate shipping, return, and privacy policies to customers. Reviews and testimonials encourage customer reviews and testimonials to build trust and credibility. Scaling and growth. As your e-commerce business grows, scaling becomes crucial. Consider strategies such as Expanding product lines, add complementary products to your offerings to increase average order value. Global expansion, explore international markets to expand your customer base. Inventory management, optimize inventory management to prevent stockouts and overstocking. Emerging trends. Stay updated on emerging e-commerce trends, such as Sustainable e-commerce, consumers are increasingly concerned about sustainability. Consider eco-friendly packaging and sourcing. AI and personalization, implement AI-driven personalization to tailor product recommendations to individual customers. Augmented reality, AR AR can enhance the online shopping experience by allowing customers to visualize products in their environment. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of the strategies and considerations involved in launching and growing e-commerce and online startups. Embracing the digital landscape can open up exciting opportunities for entrepreneurial success. Join us in the next episode as we explore failure and resilience in entrepreneurship, where we'll discuss how to handle failure and setbacks and develop the resilience needed to overcome challenges in your entrepreneurial journey. Episode 22, Failure and Resilience in Entrepreneurship Welcome to the 22nd episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the critical topics of failure and resilience in entrepreneurship. Just as a ship may encounter storms at sea, entrepreneurs are bound to face challenges, but their ability to weather these storms is what sets them apart. Why Failure and Resilience Matter Imagine sailing through turbulent waters and facing storms. Your ability to navigate these challenges and stay afloat is crucial for reaching your destination. In entrepreneurship, encountering failure and setbacks is inevitable, but your resilience in the face of adversity can determine your ultimate success. Here's why it matters. Learning from failure, failure can be a powerful teacher, providing valuable lessons that can lead to future success. Emotional resilience, resilience helps entrepreneurs cope with the emotional toll of setbacks and continue moving forward. Adaptability, resilient entrepreneurs can adapt to changing circumstances and pivot when necessary. Understanding failure. Failure in entrepreneurship can take many forms, including financial losses, product launches that don't meet expectations, or business ideas that simply don't gain traction. It's essential to recognize that failure is a natural part of the entrepreneurial journey and not a reflection of your worth or abilities. Resilience in Entrepreneurship Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks, learn from failures, and maintain a positive outlook. Here are key strategies for building resilience. Positive Mindset Cultivate a positive outlook and focus on solutions rather than dwelling on problems. Adaptability, embrace change and be open to adjusting your strategies based on feedback and circumstances. Learn from failure, analyze your failures and setbacks to extract valuable lessons. Use these lessons to improve and make informed decisions. Seek support, lean on your support network, including mentors, peers, and friends, for guidance and emotional support. Self-care, prioritize self-care to maintain physical and mental well-being. This includes exercise, healthy eating, and stress management. Handling rejection and criticism. Rejection and criticism are common in entrepreneurship. Here's how to handle them. Constructive feedback, embrace constructive criticism as an opportunity for growth. Use it to refine your ideas and strategies. Resilience to rejection, rejection is part of the entrepreneurial journey. Use rejection as motivation to prove doubters wrong. Pivoting and adaptation. Resilience often involves knowing when to pivot or adapt. If your current approach isn't working, 
don't be afraid to explore new strategies and directions. Mental toughness. Mental toughness is a key aspect of resilience. It involves staying focused, maintaining composure under pressure, and persevering through adversity. Building resilience in your team. As a leader, you can foster resilience within your team by promoting a culture of learning from failure, providing support, and setting an example with your own resilience. Resilience in the face of uncertainty. Entrepreneurship is inherently uncertain. Resilience helps you navigate this uncertainty by staying agile and adaptable. Celebrating small wins. While resilience is vital for overcoming setbacks, it's equally important to celebrate small wins along the way. Recognize and appreciate your progress, no matter how minor it may seem. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of how to handle failure and setbacks in entrepreneurship and develop the resilience needed to overcome challenges. Remember that setbacks are not the end of your journey, they are opportunities for growth and improvement. Join us in the next episode as we explore corporate innovation and entrepreneurship, where we'll discuss how large organizations foster innovation and support internal entrepreneurs, a topic that can be relevant for entrepreneurs looking to collaborate with established companies. Episode 23, Corporate Innovation and Entrepreneurship Welcome to the 23rd episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll explore the dynamic world of corporate innovation and entrepreneurship. Just as ships in a fleet adapt to changing conditions, large organizations must innovate to remain competitive, and entrepreneurs play a crucial role in this process. Why Corporate Innovation and Entrepreneurship Matter Imagine a fleet of ships that never upgrades its technology or navigational tools, such a fleet would become obsolete in no time. In the business world, innovation is the lifeblood of large organizations, and entrepreneurs are the captains of innovation within these companies. Here's why it matters. Competitive advantage, innovating within a large organization can give it a competitive edge in a rapidly changing marketplace. Employee engagement, encouraging entrepreneurship can boost employee morale and engagement as they feel empowered to contribute to the company's success. Adaptation, entrepreneurs help organizations adapt to new technologies, market trends, and customer demands. Understanding Entrepreneurship Entrepreneurship refers to the practice of employees within a company taking on entrepreneurial roles to drive innovation and bring about positive change. Here are key elements of entrepreneurship. Autonomy, entrepreneurs are given the autonomy to develop and execute innovative ideas within the organization. Risk-taking, like entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs are willing to take calculated risks in pursuit of innovation. Resource allocation, entrepreneurs may need access to specific resources, budgets, or teams to bring their ideas to life. Benefits of entrepreneurship for companies Entrepreneurship offers several benefits to organizations. Innovation, it drives innovation by encouraging employees to think creatively and develop new products, services, or processes. Talent retention, employees are more likely to stay with a company that values their ideas and provides opportunities for growth. Competitive advantage, companies that foster entrepreneurship can stay ahead of competitors by continually adapting to market changes. Creating an Entrepreneurial Culture To encourage entrepreneurship within a large organization, consider the following strategies. Leadership Support Senior leadership should actively support and champion entrepreneurship initiatives. Resources Allocate resources, including budgets and time, for entrepreneurial projects. Dedicated teams Form teams or departments focused on innovation and entrepreneurship. Innovation Challenges Host innovation challenges or competitions to generate creative ideas. Recognition and Rewards Recognize and reward entrepreneurs for their contributions and successes. Entrepreneurial Challenges Entrepreneurship isn't without its challenges. Resistance to change Employees and existing processes may resist entrepreneurial initiatives. 
Resource constraints, entrepreneurs may face limitations in securing necessary resources. Alignment with company goals, ensuring that entrepreneurial efforts align with the company's broader objectives is critical. Success stories. Numerous successful products and innovations, such as the Post-it Note and Google's Gmail, have emerged from entrepreneurial efforts within large organizations. Case study, Google's 20% time. Google famously encouraged its employees to spend 20% of their workweek on projects of their choosing. This policy led to the development of several successful products, including Gmail. By the end of this episode, you'll have a solid understanding of how large organizations foster innovation through entrepreneurship. Whether you're leading a startup or collaborating with established companies, entrepreneurial insights can be valuable for your entrepreneurial journey. Join us in the next episode as we explore entrepreneurship in emerging industries, where we'll discuss the unique challenges and opportunities in emerging industries and technologies, an exciting frontier for entrepreneurs. Episode 24, Entrepreneurship in Emerging Industries Welcome to the 24th episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll dive into the fascinating world of entrepreneurship in emerging industries. Just as explorers set out to discover new lands, entrepreneurs venture into uncharted territories of emerging technologies and industries. Why Entrepreneurship in Emerging Industries Matters Imagine being among the first to navigate a new and unexplored sea route. In emerging industries, entrepreneurs are the pioneers, charting new courses, and shaping the future. Here's why it matters. Innovation, emerging industries are fertile ground for groundbreaking innovations and technological advancements. Early Mover Advantage, entrepreneurs who establish themselves early in an emerging industry can gain a significant competitive advantage. Solving Global Challenges, many emerging industries are focused on addressing pressing global challenges, such as sustainability and healthcare. Understanding Emerging Industries Emerging industries are those characterized by rapid growth, innovation, and the potential to disrupt existing markets. They often involve cutting-edge technologies and new business models. Examples include Renewable energy, the transition to clean energy sources like solar and wind power. Biotechnology, advancements in genetics, drug development, and healthcare. Artificial intelligence, AI the development of AI technologies for various applications. Space exploration, the commercialization of space travel and exploration. Challenges and opportunities. Entrepreneurship in emerging industries presents unique challenges and opportunities. Challenges. Uncertainty, emerging industries are often characterized by high levels of uncertainty including market acceptance and regulatory hurdles. Capital intensity, developing and scaling new technologies can be capital intensive. Regulatory complexity, navigating evolving regulations can be challenging, especially in industries like biotechnology and fintech. Opportunities. First mover advantage, being among the first to enter an emerging industry can lead to a dominant market position. Innovation, emerging industries are hotbeds for innovation, offering the chance to disrupt traditional markets. Global impact, many emerging industries have the potential to address global challenges and improve quality of life. Key strategies for success. If you're considering entrepreneurship in an emerging industry, here are key strategies to consider. Market research, conduct thorough market research to understand the industry's dynamics, potential customers, and competitors. Network, build relationships with experts, investors, and other entrepreneurs in the field. Adaptability, be prepared to pivot and adapt your business as the industry evolves. Regulatory compliance, stay informed about and compliant with industry-specific regulations. Sustainability, Consider how your business can contribute to sustainability and social responsibility efforts. Case Study, Tesla in Electric Vehicles 
Tesla revolutionized the automotive industry by pioneering electric vehicles, EVs, and renewable energy solutions. Through innovation and vision, Tesla has become a leader in the EV market. Emerging Industries in Healthcare The healthcare industry is experiencing rapid transformation through emerging technologies like telemedicine, personalized medicine, and healthcare analytics. Closing Thoughts Entrepreneurship in emerging industries is not for the faint of heart, but it offers the potential for groundbreaking innovation and lasting impact. Embrace the challenges and opportunities that come with pioneering in uncharted territory. By the end of this episode, you'll have gained insights into the world of entrepreneurship in emerging industries, preparing you for the exciting journey of venturing into new frontiers. Join us in the final episode, Entrepreneurship Showcase and Business Expo, where we'll explore how to showcase your startup idea or venture to peers, mentors, and potential investors, culminating our entrepreneurial journey. Episode 25, Entrepreneurship Showcase and Business Expo Welcome to the 25th and final episode of our MBA Business School Entrepreneurial Management Program. In this episode, we'll bring our entrepreneurial journey to a close by exploring how to showcase your startup idea or venture to peers, mentors, and potential investors. It's time to share your vision with the world. Why Entrepreneurship Showcase and Business Expo Matter Imagine reaching the shores of a new and prosperous land and sharing your discoveries with fellow explorers and settlers. In entrepreneurship, the showcase and expo serve a similar purpose. They allow you to present your venture to a wider audience, gather feedback, and potentially attract partners and investors. Here's why it matters. Visibility Showcasing your startup increases its visibility and awareness among relevant stakeholders. Feedback Gathering feedback from peers and experts can help you refine your business model and strategy. Networking The expo provides a valuable networking opportunity potentially leading to partnerships or investment. Preparing for the Entrepreneurship Showcase Before you present your startup, consider these key steps. Refine your pitch. Create a compelling and concise pitch that communicates your startup's value proposition, target market, and growth potential. Market research. Be prepared to discuss market trends, competition, and your unique selling points. Financials. Present your financial projections, including revenue models and funding needs. Demo or prototype, if applicable, showcase a demo or prototype of your product or service. Team introduction, introduce your team members and their roles in the company. Pitching your startup. When presenting your startup, consider these tips. Engage your audience, start with a compelling hook to capture the audience's attention. Tell your story, share the journey and inspiration behind your startup. People connect with stories. Highlight benefits, emphasize the benefits your solution brings to customers or the market. Use visuals, incorporate visuals or multimedia elements to make your pitch more engaging. Address questions, be prepared to answer questions from the audience and judges. Receiving feedback. Feedback is invaluable. Be open to constructive criticism and use it to improve your startup and pitch. Consider feedback from mentors, peers, and potential investors. Networking and building relationships. The Expo is an excellent opportunity to network and build relationships. Here's how. Approachability. Be approachable and open to conversations with attendees. Exchange contact information, collect contact information from potential collaborators or investors. Follow up, after the expo, follow up with people you've connected with to nurture relationships. Final thoughts and reflection. As you conclude your entrepreneurial journey, take a moment to reflect on how far you've come. Celebrate your achievements, lessons learned, and the growth you've experienced. The ongoing journey. Remember that entrepreneurship is an ongoing journey. Even after the showcase and expo, continue to refine your business, seek opportunities for growth, and adapt to changing circumstances. Closing Remarks 
We hope this entrepreneurial management program has equipped you with valuable knowledge and insights to embark on your entrepreneurial journey. Whether you're starting a new venture, innovating within an existing organization, or exploring emerging industries, the skills and strategies you've gained will serve you well. Thank you for joining us on this educational voyage, and we wish you success and fulfillment in all your entrepreneurial endeavors. This concludes our final episode. If you have any more questions or need further guidance in the future, feel free to reach out. Good luck, and may your entrepreneurial spirit continue to flourish.